Well, the government's changed drone laws yet again. And it's because it's the government and they're always behind the curve. But now we have a new program called LANCE, the Low Altitude Authorization Notification Capability. And if you want to fly near an airport, but you're just a recreational hobbyist, here's how you do it. First thing you need to do is get online on a computer or your smartphone. I do recommend you using your smartphone to make it easier if you're actually out in the field. You'll need to create a Air Maps account and give them the proper information. Give them your cell phone number of your smartphone because your authorization will come in as a text. And then you'll have it on hand if there are any issues, it's right in your pocket. Once you've created an account, open up the Air Maps and log in. Look at the map and look at your location. See if you're near any airports. Zoom out because sometimes it's broken up into grids. For this video, we're going to look at the Reno Tahoe Airport, which is located in Reno, Nevada. Once we zoom into the map a little bit, you'll notice a grid broken up in a circle. And that's the five mile radius around the Reno Tahoe Airport and around most other airports that you'll be looking at. If you're flying outside of this circle, you don't need authorization, you don't even need to use the app, you just need to follow the standard drone laws, don't go over 400 feet, don't fly over crowds, etc. I enjoy the Air Maps app because it also tells me about national parks and protected wildlife land. If you look just south and west of Lake Tahoe, there's a big red blotch, and it's because it's protected wildlife. There are no motorized vehicles allowed in the area. Even though we fly drones and we're up in the sky, they still have motors and they still disturb wildlife. So I like the Air Maps app because it tells me pretty much everything around my area that I can and cannot fly. Once you have a location designated and you are near an airport, zoom into those grids. You'll start to see numbers and you'll see a little bar above those numbers. If you see a red bar above a number, you cannot get authorization in that grid. Sometimes the grid right next to it might have an orange bar and that's okay. So looking at Reno Tahoe, let's plot this spot right here. Now it says we can fly up to 200 feet. If we're right on the edge of one of these grids and we're right on the edge of 200 feet that we can fly in 100 feet, you must take the lower altitude. If you're flying back and forth between grids and that's your requested flight zone, you have to keep it at the lower altitude no matter what because that's what you're authorized for. So see if you can shift over slightly to get more, more height when you fly. However, as an FPV drone racer or freestyle, most of the time we don't even go above 100 feet unless it's to dive a building because let's be honest, there's nothing to do up there. We wanna fly around trees and buildings and gates and anything else that can break our drones. And that's where we enjoy having fun. Once you've found a good safe place to fly and you are actually near an airport, tap on the map and press and hold. It should bring up a circle and that's your flight radius. You can increase that for however far you're gonna fly away from yourself, but you still have to follow the standard drone laws. Once you have your location and your area flying, you can go down a little further in the app and you'll see you need to put in your drone weight, is it operating within visual line of sight, and a couple other questions. Answer those and submit. The next page will let you know of any warnings that are in the area. If you have a red triangle and a red text there, it's telling you you can't fly there yet. You either need to call tower control and get authorization, or maybe it's a temporary flight restriction, or maybe you're in a national park or something. If you are in a national park or protected wildlife zone or anything else that's not an airport, tower control cannot give you permission. You have to talk to the national park ranger, or you have to submit a request through the actual FAA to fly there. Tower control in the Lance app is only good for the airports that we'll be flying near. The Lance app is great because you can submit a flight up to 90 days in advance. However, I recommend you do put it really close to the time you're going to fly, possibly within a couple hours or the day before, because if anything changes in your flight plan, you have to resubmit a new flight plan and cancel the old one. So make sure you know you're going to fly and don't submit fake flight plans to play with the app. Once you have submitted your actual flight plan and you didn't get any red texts, after you hit the submit button, you should get a text within 
10 seconds or less. This text will have an authorization number attached to it. And that authorization number is also linked in the air maps and saved there. So it saves all your authorizations as long as you keep the app on your phone. That way, if you have any problems in the future, you can go back and reference and say, yes, I was authorized. Here is my reference number. Now, the Air Maps app has a lot of other functions. You can request Part 107 commercial use through it. You can also plot out a custom flight location in case the circle is not a good representation. Whatever you're doing, it takes less than a minute to submit a request and you get a permission back within seconds. All it takes is one person to have a grudge against drones to call the police and say you're flying too close to an airport and you might get slapped with a fine. But now the Lance program makes it a lot easier for us hobbyists to just enjoy what we're doing without getting hassled. So, whatever you do, do your own research, know the laws, and keep ripping packs.